Hello, guys. Hello, it's Mario here. How is everything going? Let me know, guys, if you hear myself correctly, okay? Mario, Mario, and Jason. Hope that everything is okay with all of you. Let me know if you hear myself because you have your mic closes, close, and I don't listen to you. Let me know if you hear myself correctly, just to know that. Thanks for coming, guys, today. Let me know. I'm going to close here a few things. They have not really nice connection to the internet, okay? If in some time you feel that you don't listen to myself correctly, just let me know. I'll open your mic, okay? And let me know anything. Um, yeah, Mario. Do you have me? Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly, man. Perfect. And you to myself? Thank you. Thank you. Do you, you hear myself? Yes. Okay, great. Great. Okay, so we went to, uh, you know, we are really like just three people today, Mario, Myron, and, and Jason. And I met Jason before, but I think that I've never seen before Myron or Mario. So it would be nice if you can introduce like quick each of you. Mario, you were, were the first one, the first person in joining the, the meeting. Let us know, man, where are you from? Yes, What's, hello, everyone. Where are you from? Yeah. What's your history with the Flamenco yeah, guitar now? would be nice to know. Yeah, well, my name is Mario Fuentes. I live in Brownsville, Texas, uh, and I've loved flamenco for a long, long time. Uh, it's, um, you know, it's very relaxing. I try to play it, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I would like to learn some more. Um, so I've, I've been, uh, you know, listening to flamenco for many, many years, and it's very, very relaxing for me. Great. So nice to meet you, all of you. Thanks, man. And what are you doing right? Are you working on right now on something to improve your flamenco playing or something or not? And not not formally. Uh, that's why I went. This is my first time approaching something. Uh, I would like to to try something systematically. Uh, I think that's what I need. Uh, okay. You know, it's it's. I, I need I need to follow some structure. I guess. Okay. Great. <clears throat> Great. Great to know that. Thanks, Mario. Thanks for your words, mm -hmm. Mike. Myron, it looks like you are the second man. Open your mic. I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly your name. Man. Open your mic because it's close. They can listen to you. Now, I think. Yes, it's Myron, and I hear you just fine. Great, man. Um, I've been playing from for about uh, two years. I've taken private flamenco lessons from uh, a guy from Sevilla. Great. And um, currently, I'm in my sixth year of classical playing. Awesome. And um, and I'm working on Paco de Lucia's uh, Dos Aguas, Olé. Three Dos Aguas. Uh, how how it's going, man? So anyway, <laughs> trying to <laughs> how it's going. This, trying the... to learn to play those. Okay, great, great. Where where are you from, Mike? It's, it's going okay. Okay, great. Uh, Seattle, Washington. Okay, great, great, thanks. And uh, where where do you want to be with flamenco guitar, like in one, one year? What do you want to be doing? What's your plan with that? Yeah, my... um, to and put uh, to conquer some of uh, um, Paco de Lucia's uh, music, um, and put to and put to. Um, has those really crazy stretches. Yeah. And so. Great. And then uh, the fast runs. Great. So. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know what's happened with myself about with the Tredos Agua song? It's like, you know, the big picado that it has on the middle part, more or less. No? It's like a really big picado, a really big yeah. picado. It's like whenever I listen to the song, it doesn't matter how many times I hear that. It's like whenever I listen to the song, I'm always thinking, you know, what the hell? How quick is he going to play the picado? You know, and I know that it's a recording, and I know that it's been played like a long time ago, no? But always, whenever I listen to the song, it's like I never um, believe how quick it is. It's like incredible. Amazing. Amazing. Nice yeah, song. and... Uh, um... The melody and the bass, yeah, and the treble at the same time to give that the two different waters and yeah. 
um, I listened to somebody else uh, do a critique of it, and it's like, wow, there's a lot going on there. Okay, oh, yes. And uh, great, man. Great, great. Okay, let's thanks, Myron. Thanks for coming, man. And uh, let's hear. I know I met Jason before, but let's see some introduce to, to all the to all the rest of the guys. Yeah. Hi guys. <laughs> nice hey, to see you. Nice to see some flamenco fans here. That's great. Holy. Um, yeah, I, I I think I came to flamenco from my guitar teacher who was teaching me, you know, rock since I was a kid. He started taking flamenco lessons in Toronto, and I think I got to a point where I was you know, a teenager, and he said, you know, I don't have anything more to teach you with rock. You have to join a band or something now, but I can start teaching you flamenco. So I. <laughs> Yep. So I so I continued with him and started learning that as he was learning I was learning so it was just kind of cool and I discovered Paco de Lucia and um, by that point I'd had already been introduced to um, uh, you know Al Miola and John McLaughlin so I mean I think I think all that guitar music is just it's always stuck with me so yeah I think that that's where the flamenco comes in most of us it's like like we are playing flamenco like thanks to Paco de Lucia ninety percent of the people it's like. 90%. Yeah. There is also a 10% thanks to Gypsy Kings, also. <laughs> so oh, many yeah, people right, get yeah. into flamenco music thanks to them. Yeah, but you know. What are you doing right now, Jason? Are you selling something or are you focused on something exactly or, or not? Yeah, right now I'm just, um, I'm, I've been working a lot of my, my picking technique really um just trying to get the language down like some of those john mclaughlin ld miola licks um but once i reach a certain point i'm gonna come back to the flamenco guitar and get those techniques down i want to i find i want to find a way to marry these two things yeah. i really like the rhythms and i really like the, the polyphony of of flamenco that you don't really get with a guitar pick um, yeah. yeah so uh I, I i don't have the specific goals just i know i'm going in that direction Okay, or is it like, you know, do you know what do you want to be doing? It's like, take your time, um, you know, don't be, we're not in a rush, you know? I've like, got the sound in my head, you know, <laughs> that's, I've got the sound important. in my head, so I just got to keep moving in that way. That's a really important thing. It's not easy, just sometimes it's not easy to have your sound or your mind. It's not easy sometimes, so yeah. you have a really a good step down, by the way. Okay, right guys, so I'm going to introduce right now myself, okay? Yes, I'm really quick. So my name, as you know, I'm Mario, Mario Moraga. I'm from a city in Spain, the south of Spain, called Andújar. In, it's in Andalusia. But right now I'm living in Jerez de la Frontera. Uh, I don't know if you know Jerez de la Frontera. is like one of the most important flamenco cities in, like in the world, thanks to maybe Sevilla, maybe Jerez de la Frontera, maybe like all this area. It's like one of the most, the biggest, you know, flamenco communities in, in Spain, a really big one. Um, so I studied at the conservatory like for 14 years. I, I think that I finished on 2016. And now I'm working on so many tablaos, companies, and, you know, I have my own full online academy since like 2017, I think, more or less. And guys, so it's like today I'm here because of so many students and also so many people on social media. When I upload videos, and they told me that it's really difficult for them to practice with the metronome. And it's true. It's like, I know, make your hands up if you use a metronome when you study. So um, hands up if you study with the metronome it's, or not. Okay, you might not study with the metronome. Mario, do you use metronome yes. at home? No, no, I've never used it. Okay, and you, Myron, man? Yeah, all the time. Okay, great. The, my friend Robert is here, man. Nice to see you. Long time. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're going to do today, because it's really nice. So it's like, for me, it's like three different steps, like three type of ways of guitarists, of musicians. It's like, I don't use a metronome, or I use a metronome, or I use like a type of metronomes that increases speed automatically. Okay. What's the difference between when you practice with a metronome and you increase with your hand the speed or the difference between 
when you have an application that increases the speed automatically. The thing is that if the application is increasing automatically, the speed is like it's something that is taking you up on the speed. And also you have to develop and increase your leads and skills to really get the new speed when the metronome automatically goes and increases the speed. You get what I, what I say? It's really important. The first problem with the metronome is like be able to take and get the rhythm, okay? And be able to um, keep on the same rhythm as a metronome. But there is a, another step that it's going to make our work more difficult. That it could be like a, how to follow the metronome if the metronome is increasing the speed automatically. What's happening? If you are doing that every day, for sure, for sure, for sure, you are going to increase 100% um, the speed every day of your exercises. Sometimes we'll spend like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes on the same speed, and it's nice, for sure. It's always nice to practice. But guys, if you are not increasing the speed every day, almost, at minimum, at least, like 5 beats, 3 beats, 4 beats, 2 beats, it's like you are not increasing 100% your techniques. So it's, you are getting stronger because you are practicing and always is nice to practice. But if you are not really increasing the metronome, it's not really working 100%. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Does yeah. it make sense for you? Yes. Great. So what are we going to say today? See today, I'm going to share with you, first of all, the application that I use. It's for free. It's something that you can download on your tablet, iPad, iPhone, whatever. And by the way, one student <laughs> told about um, to me about this application. Okay, we're going to see the application. Uh, we're going to see the difference between the warming up zone, the working zone, and the target zone of, our, of an exercise. It's like how I work the next every day. I'm also going to share with you my my I don't, know, my I don't know how to say in English. It's like a diary in which I write down all my all my exercises and the speed that I use to 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 get every day. Okay, it is for example, if you have to write down the maximum speed that you get on any of your exercises, and tomorrow when you keep practicing, you know that your yesterday's maximum speed was eighty five. For example, so today you know that you have to get from 60 to 85 and also a little bit extra because you really need to increase a little bit each all of your exercises. You get the idea? Great. Okay, great. So let's before we start. Uh, hey, Robert, open your mic if you want to introduce to the rest of the guys if you can. Stop. I don't know if you're able. Hey Mario, nice to see you, man. Long, long time. I know. Well, I'm still actually out here working on I'm in Alaska, and okay. uh, I've been I've been gone for almost five months. I wasn't supposed to be gone this long. That's why you haven't heard from me in so long. But okay. I'm coming home in ten days, and, and then we'll we will reconnect. But I, I'm at a grocery store here in Ketchikan, Alaska today. I'm <laughs> buying just trying to. Great, man. So I will see you. Seminar, so. I, I will see you more relaxed when you return home. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Take care. Thanks, Mario. Take care, man. Good to see you again. Thank you. You too. Yeah, Robert is he's into the academy, but you know, he's also always working out of the city. And we stop his membership. And and we're going to return again once that he returns home in a few days. Looking forward to that, man. Good to see you again. Okay, let me um, share with you my phone, my iPhone screen. Okay. Second, I'm going to open here. One second, okay, guys. I One 
One second, guys. I'm done. I'm, there is, I'm, trying, I'm having some issues trying to share in the screen of my iPhone. Okay, because it's what I use. What I use for the bathroom. I also have the application on the iPad, so it depends of the day. I can use the iPad or, the, or my iPhone, but you can download it on any device. Okay, almost finishing. A second. Guys, also if sometimes you you don't understand myself, please let me know and stop myself. Okay, because I know that sometimes maybe my accent is not easy for you to understand. So if on some any time you have some problem or thing that you want to ask, please okay let myself let me know. Okay, you are supposed to see my my screen, right? Of my iPhone. Okay, there we go. I see it. Okay, the application is this one. The wine green color. The name is Metromon Beats. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a photo and I'm going to send you also by by mail once that we finish. Okay. There we go. So once I, once I, it's really easy. Okay, really, really easy. As you know, in, uh, no, I don't want to pay. Don't worry, it's for free. Okay, okay. So you don't have to. You have to pay nothing for that. As you know, on any other application, you can increase with your hand or manually your your speed. But why I love this application? There must be so many ones that also offer this setting. Okay, but you know that's the one that I use, and I want to share that with you. Usually, most of the my exercises will have like four beats, okay, on each measure. So you can, if you are doing a three beats measure, you can choose three. If you are using a two beats measure, you can use two. So most of them are going to be between two, three, or four, okay. So then I go to this section of the application. So it's going to be in Spanish, okay. Let me see if I can. Put it in English. No. I don't think so. Okay, so I will be translating to yourself, don't worry. So once I we click on the left bottom left part of the screen. We're going to have like a new section, okay? So if you have it in English, you will see increase the speed, decrease, or silence measure. You know, we only need the, to increase the speed. You can, that's off and that's on. What I always do, I increase only one beat, just one, okay? Each depends of if you, are practicing for the first times an exercises, or it's something that you have been practicing for so much time. Okay, if it's something new for you, I always recommend to increase one beat each four measures. Okay, or if it's an uh, an exercise that you have have been working for so much time, maybe you can increase each two. So what's going to happen if you keep it on? As you can see here, and you go back, and if you play, I want to see that one. Have a look, it's increasing automatically. For me guys, for the last like four years, since I discovered this application, it's like, hey, one second, one second. Since I discovered this app, this app is like, I increase a lot all this the speed of all my exercises okay something that is helping to me a lot because before that i have the traditional metronome and you have to increase with your hand okay five beats okay five beats and you have to stop and you know if you're practicing like an exercise on a loop motion it's like always to stop just to increase the speed it's awful like you just get stuck and you have to warm up again so for me it's really important to have an exercise and don't start practicing 
at the same time that the speed is increasing automatically because it's like you are not um, you are not losing the, the you know the swing and the the warming up um, situation that you have from the at the moment okay does it make sense for you more or less yeah. okay Mar M mario can you hear me yeah ma'am okay uh now that's for the iphone what do you recommend for android phone you, you also have this application for android the same one okay if you All look right. on your android you must see that metronomy i'm going to write down the name on the chat okay metronomy right. beats metronomy beats okay, okay that's a green it's a green icon right. okay with a metro and the icon. background I, I saw that it's green okay for sure, there okay. must be so many different ones, but it's the one that I use. And it's something that for me, it's like it make a change. Like since four or five years ago, since today. It's like if I want, I really okay. want to increase and the speed of a exercise or for with any solo piece, or if I really want to improve that and increase everything, I have to use that. Because if I spend at the same time for 50 minutes, it's nice, you know, it's always nice to practice. But what's the goal here? Practice or increase your techniques? And the only way to really increase your techniques is increasing the speed. And of course, taking care about the clean movement, the clean sound, the strength, and you know everything. So many, so many more things, you know? But to really increase the speed, it's what is going to really give to you the opportunity of increase all your techniques, skills of your playing, okay? So it's like my sentence always is the same one. So whenever you study techniques or repertoire or whatever you study, so if you are not increasing the speed of the section that you are studying every day that you play, you are doing something wrong. It's like, this is not other rule for myself. No, Mario, I did some new piece for me. What? Ah, stop saying me things. Okay, it's like, if you are not increasing every day the speed, just at least just one bit, two bits, if you're not doing that every day that you play, you are not doing, you are missing and wasting a lot of time. Okay. That's like, for me, it's my super, my rule. And it's something that it's yes or yes. <laughs> if you're you not doing that, it's like you are wasting so much time. Because instead of spending one, year, one month with an exercise, you are spending four months, three months. It's like, oh my God. So if in the time that you spend, for practice one exercise, I can do four. Imagine how much my techniques are going to increase if I compare with any other person that don't follow this um, this method. No. Okay, clear, guys, more or less. Yes. Great. Any question about this mm -hmm. part of the of the of the meeting today? Okay. So in, in, a, in any moment, if you have any question, please let me know. Right now I'm going to share with you the iPad. One second, I'm going to move back computer. And I'm going to share with you the difference between, that's a really personal thing that I, that I create. And then we are also, by the way, creating a book about that. Where we have finished the book. We are just waiting for the designer just to make it beautiful. Uh, you will be, you will see that on your emails, okay, in a few weeks, maybe one month and a half. I'm going, I'm, with the time, once that I starting to do, to use this method of increasing the speed with the metronome, okay, automatically with not, with no need of stop what are you playing, I realize that, you know, also when, when you teach, you have to take care about what you do to try and share that with your students, no? It's like when I'm talking with my students how um, how to work on techniques, it's also difficult for me because I have like almost 50 students online, all of them from USA, Australia, Europe, and all people from all over the world. And it's like, it's difficult sometimes to express so many things that it's easy to express them in person, but it's difficult sometimes to practice behind the camera, no? So I also I also try to find and create like different methods that explain different things. So how explain how to study techniques every day? 
So I make and I create like three different work zones for an exercise. Okay, you will have a warming up zone, working zone, and target zone. Okay, so I'm going to share with you the iPad right now, the screen, and you are going to see how it works. The cables here. Okay, let me see. You see my screen, right? I'm going to stop my camera because I have not really good uh, connection here. So, as I told you, if you want to write down, just so you don't forget, we're going to talk about a uh, warming up zone. Working zone and target zone. Okay, those are like the three different sections in which where we are going to be moving around when we are practicing uh, techniques exercise. Also, also with the repertoire happens. Okay, what is the what's the difference between warming, working, and target zone? So let's explain that. Uh, oh, sorry. There we go. So imagine, for example, and that they have an arpeggio exercise, for example, whatever. And my usual speed is like my maximum speed today is imagine 80 BPM. Okay, that's my maximum speed today that it's Monday, right? Okay, so it's Monday. My maximum speed is 80. So what's the problem here? What's the best, the first mistake that so many of us do sometimes? So the first mistake is that if your maximum speed is 80, you cannot start practicing at 80. Because it's still like, like your maximum. It's like if I run, if I or if I do cycling, I have to warm up before. And I cannot warm up if I literally go to a mountain doing cycling. It's like I have to do something for before that that makes myself warm up and, and before I work. Okay. So what I'm doing. So if my maximum speed, as I told you, is 80. I start working on 60. Mario, so many people say to me, hey, Mario, but 60 is so slow for me. So I can do around 80. Why I have to go down until 60? OK, that's really easy. Between 60, let's see, more or less like the half part, OK? During this time, okay, we're going to find like the warming up section and the working zone. Why? Because it's if your speed maximum is 80 and 60 for you is really easy, that's what I want, man. Because techniques is not to increase your muscles of your hand. For me, techniques is how quick we send information from our mind to our hands. So if we are playing like really slowly for us, we are giving time for our mind to send information to our hands. And we are doing on a so much better way all the exercises on this speed. Yes, we are have more time to focus on the mistakes or how to move them a hand or how to make all a clean sound so the time that you spend practicing from 60 to 80 more or less 50 percent of the time it's going to be warming up and then the working zone and once that you get 80 the metronome is going to keep working and imagine that today you reach until 85 bpms 
So this zone will be your target zone. You get that? Okay, like the idea. So what's going to happen? So since today, today, so yesterday my maximum speed was 80. Today, my maximum, my maximum speed is 85. What's going to happen? Tomorrow, or tomorrow, that is Tuesday, I know that my maximum speed is 85. I will start my metronome on 65. And again, the same sequence. Warming up, working zone, and maybe today we're going to reach 92. So 92 is going to be my maximum speed for tomorrow. 92. I am going to start on 72. If you see guys, we're increasing our, our speed every, every day. And it's really easy because we are always going back 20 bits. It's 20 bits, it's a lot. So if you are able to make that on 92, it's going to be really easy for you to make it on 72. What is going to happen? If you're practicing something 20 bits below your maximum speed, you will take care about the clean movements. You will take about, about care about the transitions. You will take care about um, fingering and not repeat the fingers. Depends on the exercises. Of the exercise, you will take care about different things. But the thing is that it's, for me, the sentence is always the same one. It's like, play always. How do you, uh, one second. Play always any exercise that you are practicing more slowly than you think that it's slowly. It's, I don't know if it's currently translated to the English. It's like, if I think that slowly is 80, start on 60. <laughs> Always more slowly than the concept that you have in your mind that it's slowly. I don't know if I express orally, because it's what it's going to give to you the opportunity to really increase the speed. And as I told you before, it's not how strong I have my muscles. No, it's like all our muscles are have the same muscle, muscles, more or less, okay? And it doesn't depend on how many hours I play. So the thing is, you will increase your techniques if you increase and improve the relationship between your mind and your hands. Why I can go more quickly than any other person or any other person better than me? Because I practice more the speed in which I send the information from my mind to the finger. When you are practicing at something so quickly and it doesn't work, it's not working because of your fingering. It's working because you are not giving time for your hand to receive all the information. And you don't have time to take care about any something that you are missing. And because of that, the exercise is not working. Okay, and you cannot use that for techniques repertoire uh, for <laughs> anything that you want. Okay. More or less cl clear ways, like the difference between like the warming up zone, working zone and target zone. Okay. That's something that I use with all my students. It's like, hey guy, man, where are you starting the exercises? Man is starting around 85. So I decrease until 65 and I reach every day like two, three, four bits. That's the best way. And it's like, if you practice that for three days a week. It's like you're increasing 15 bits a week. Imagine that more or less you can increase five bits a day. And if you practice three days a week, for example, it's like you're increasing 15 bits a week. Guys, it's a lot. So if you're practicing a picado on 100, and in one week, you can increase, you can get not to 100, you can get to 115, it's a lot. So how can you increase your techniques just in one month? That's the thing. So and if you're not increasing in the speed of an exercises of an exercise, 40 beats a month is because of you are not working on how to increase that. 
Okay. So how I use a bathroom? I don't use a bathroom to practice flamenco repertoire. Okay, be careful with that. That's something really personal. You maybe can find so many other um, things outside from today's meeting, no? But for me, I only use the metronome when I study techniques. Okay, if I want to study my flamenco repertoire, I prefer to use like percussion loops they find on the internet. Okay, percussion or clapping. Uh, loops that I can find on YouTube or Spotify, or wherever. Because what happened in, in, for example, in practicing imagine Alegrías, okay? Alegrías has, it's a 12-bit measure flamenco style. So there is not a metronome that gives to us like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. If I spend always on a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, maybe I can be doing a 13-bit measure but the metronome is not giving to me the mistake. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, for example, Alegría is a flamenco style, but it's on 12-bit measure. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So a traditional metronome don't give to you this a really exactly rhythm. There are so many met flamenco metronomes, okay, by the way. But I don't use them. I prefer like normal palmas or percussion loops that you can find on YouTube. So because of that, I don't like to use a normal metronome to practice my repertoire. Unless I want to increase the speed of a section of my repertoire. You get? It's like if I know that I play correctly a section that they want to increase the speed, but I know that it's currently on rhythm because I'm practicing that with uh, palmas or I used to play on a show and I know that rhythmically it's correct. Okay. On this case, I will use a metronome if I really want to increase the speed and I will use the same method that I explained you a few minutes before. Okay. Clear guys. Mm. Any question about that? Nothing? Uh, Mario, I yeah. have a question. Of course. Okay. Uh, the metrodome. So, the way I'm understanding is the metrodome, you use it as a basic measure for your progress, right? Yeah. Um, now, is it... A, can the metrodome, uh, if not careful, can it hurt you trying to learn flamenco? Can it be a, a, an issue? So let, let me see if I understand correctly, okay? So you are asking that if to study with metrodome, it's against mm -hmm. learn flamenco, right? Right. Is, okay. is it possible that we can get into an issue with it? Oh, no. So I'm going to be truthful with you. Okay. Right now I am 13, mm -hmm. so 13, 31 years old. Okay. So when I was around, I don't remember okay. exactly. When I was around 20, 24, 19, 24, 22, more or less around these ages, I used to study like a lot with the metal, a lot of techniques every day. And you know what um, I realized about myself? When I study a lot of techniques, I get really cold playing. It's like with not emotions. It's like really technique, run, 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 so quick and maybe so virtuistic, but with no feelings. Because right now I saw some bit of myself when I was 24, 23, and I say, Jesus Christ, I'm playing so quick, but with no feelings and not no emotions. You know what I mean? Right. right. So it's like you have to take care. So because of that, I always uh, say the same thing. 30% techniques, 70% repertoire. Because why okay. do you need to have a really quick pick out exercise or a pay exercise if you don't have any repertoire in which you use the techniques that you already learned before? Do you know what I mean, man? Mm -hmm. 
Right. So it's like, it's always uh, to have a piece open, the tab, a score, or a tutorial, mm -hmm. whatever, it's necessary. So it's like always to have a, to have a solo piece to work on is, will be your best teacher. For example, right now, Myron mm -hmm. is working on Entre Dos Aguas from Paco Dulcia. That's your best teacher. So like, and also for the last mm -hmm. one year, one year and a half, to all my online students, it's like with mm -hmm. all of them, I'm working on a solo piece. On with all of them. It's like, it's not just a membership. It's not just the techniques. It's like, which solo piece do you want? Okay, this one, here you have. Score, tab, tutorials, whatever. Because also if I go to myself, when I was studying on the conservatory, I used to study five solo pieces a year. And the four wow. years that I spent in Cordoba studying like five solo pieces a year about different composers is what makes me a really open mind because every time that you learn a new piece, you are in, in, in yeah, like adopting and getting a new language. Because if I study a solo piece from Paco de Lucia, another one from Vicente Amigo, another one from Manolo Sanlúcar, from Paco Cepero and from Tomatito, all of them have has different languages. So if I mm -hmm. learn a piece from each of them, I'm getting a learning their own language. And I can then compose music by myself mm -hmm. using different things from all of them on a mix. You know? Right. So for me always yes. techniques is important. Great. It's important. Because they are going to help you if you work on techniques every day. They are going to help yourself to really get uh, results um, soon, okay, on, the, on a minimum mm -hmm. period of time. No, if you are not practicing practicing the next, mm -hmm. maybe you will you will take more time. You will need more time, no, to get your goals with the solo piece that you are working on. Yeah. Okay, All right. More or less clear, guys. Mm -hmm. Any other question, Jason? Farah, I don't know Farah, uh, man, because you got you got inside a few minutes after the meeting. I don't know if you have any question. And now let me share with you uh, my practice journal. That's a that's a word that I was looking for a few minutes ago. Let me look for that because it's supposed to have it here. So I'm going to show now how I, yeah, here we are. Hey, that's a video. There we are. I'm going to share the screen again, okay? So here you have, okay? If you need that, just let me know and I will send you, I will send you that by, by, by email, okay? Today, before we, after we finish the meeting today. But that's a practice journal. By the way, I have a new one. But it's going to be into the book that we are going to be releasing in a few in a few weeks. Okay, that's the old thing, but you know the structure is always the same. Okay, uh, how it work with that? So if you see, I'm going to edit that. You are going to find one second. Yeah, if you see, you're going to have like four lines, like the first, second, third, and fourth. For most of you. Unless you say that you have three, four hours a day to practice, maybe it's not the normal thing. For most of you, I will delete the last two lines because you don't need as many exercises as you maybe think. Okay. And maybe for the 90% of you, I only will use one line, but you know, it depends on how much time you have a day to practice. Okay. So imagine that you have an Picado, I always use arpeggio or tremolo at the beginning because it's like a really circle movement. So if you do a tremolo or arpeggio, something that if you see the exercise, 
it's like a circle movement on your hand and it helps the blood over your hand to start working and moving the muscles and everything okay so imagine that you have an exercise called number one okay i'll pay you number one that's the name just as an example okay, so here i write down the speed that they reach each day so you will have here for example 84 yesterday or if today i reach 92 so that's a list of speed that you will have you will see your goals how you are getting them and also you will know the speed that you reach yesterday to make the warming zone working zone and the target zone of the next day that you study you get the idea mm -hmm. okay so i have another pay you then wait apical exercise number one for example here i put a thumb exercise number one and also rasgeo pattern from three four years ago i include rasgeo as a technique on my practice journal okay so you rasgeo number one so that's the first line of exercises okay if you have around two hours a day to practice okay fill the next line if you have just one hour a day to practice techniques, just stay on one line. That's my advice. Okay. I repeat, if you have no more than one hour a day, so if you have one hour a day to practice, please only use one line for techniques exercises, no more than that. Why? Because what's the goal? The goal is to increase speed. So if you have 20 exercises, you're going to take, get, take a lot of time to increase the speed of 20 exercises because you have to spend a lot of time just on learning them. So I prefer just to go every day twice on the same four exercises to really increase the speed of each of them instead of have like four, 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 and four. You know what I mean? That's something that I realized by myself when I was studying and also with my students. It's like sometimes um, as a teacher, no, you want to share with your student one second, um, as many exercises as you can to make them improve and before than they think. And guys, it's not how many exercises you play. It's like how much time you invest on each exercise. That's a thing. Because as I told you, if you have 20 different exercises, how much time you need just to learn them? Just to learn, not to increase. Just to learn. It's impossible. It's like really, 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 really difficult. Okay. And so for me, and I also do sometimes for myself also, if I want to warm it up, quick because I have to rehearse for a show or if I have to practice my repertoire for a show or I have not much time for techniques but they want to warm up I just get four exercises and I practice them for 20 minutes half an hour that's what I do because it's really give to you like a really um, habit that's the thing. That's the word. I was thinking on the word for the last minute. To get this habit of how to practice the techniques. As soon as you know the exercise, as soon you will start working on that. Okay? And I always try to get easier exercises at the beginning because it's difficult sometimes to work with the method and to you to that. Okay? So don't try to make really difficult exercises. Uh, try to get something easy at the beginning, get used to the metronome, like um, work on the relationship between the metronome and yourself. And once that you improve that, okay, let's go to another step and look for a difficult, a more difficult exercise. Clear guys, more or less? I have a question, Mario. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we gather the data and kind of it's going to tell us, uh, you know, our speed. 
we're going to get an idea, a general idea with speed. At what point do you measure uh, our progress and for us to make sure we're on the right path? Do we provide uh, a video to you or how, how does that work? What, what's the process? No, so today is not the idea of saying to me anything, just to share with you, how can you do that at home? I'm going to explain you how can work with me if you want, don't worry at the end. Okay, but today is like just to give you an okay. idea of how I make it with my students and with any person that maybe don't want to be with myself studying in the future, but just to share with you something that a lot of people um, ask to me, uh, you know, and it's, this free lesson is something that I'm giving just for my subscribers. It's not something that's open. If you see to my social media, I didn't make any ads for that. It's something that I want just to share that with my subscribers on the email. Okay. So, but yeah, the thing, um, I thought that you were asking something different that I, I just realized and I'm going to share with you now. Uh, but yeah, how I work with my students is like, we have a WhatsApp group, we have we have a Facebook group just for the students, and they are sending on those groups their videos. And also we have a group lesson every week, so, sorry, each 15 days. Um, that's a QA lesson in which maybe it can take 30 minutes or it can take three hours. So it depends on the questions that they have, I will spend more time or less, no? But the idea is to, yeah, have their exercises, get this habit, and sometimes we practice together. It's like sometimes my students go into a Zoom meeting without myself and they practice together with the metronome. And they like start working between them and also with myself sometimes. Okay. But you know, the idea is this, guys. It's like what we get from today's is like the application, like the warming act, working song, and target song, and also how to structure your practice journal. Okay. For me, for exercises, it's enough. It's enough. And the thing that I was thinking that you were asking, Mario, it's okay, Mario, if I am working on the warming up zone, working zone, and target zone, how I know when I have to stop practicing an exercise? That's the next question. And that's something that I, I didn't realize, I didn't think about. I forget that. Um, and you remember to me when you asked your question so for me it's a nice time to stop practicing an exercise an exercise that it's increasing the speed automatically when you feel that you are making the same mistake two or three times for me the signal that says to me that hey mario stop it's your maximum speed for today okay don't mm -hmm. don't wait until it doesn't sound no as soon as you see a small mistake two or three times, stop. Because there is something that's the point in which you have no time between your mind and your hands to receive the information. And you are sending more information than your hands can receive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, clear Mario? Yes. Great. Uh, any question, guys, about that, about something, something else? Okay. Guys, so right now, if you give your permission, I'm going to share with you if you want, like, as Mario told a few minutes ago, um, like how I work with the students, uh, how it's my academy, what do you find if you get inside? I don't know if you are maybe interested on know how I work with my students and our our community. Robert is, by the way, inside of that for the last months. But, you know, as I told you, we stopped our membership because he's traveling around the seas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's going to restart in a few days that he can back uh, home again. Okay, but guys, at the end, so the first thing that you're going to find is a community. Uh, because of that, the name of the Academy is Familia Flamenca, no? Uh, because like three, four years ago, I bought uh, great Robert, don't worry, man. Uh, like three, four years ago, I bought like a lot of all the like online courses that there is on the internet just to know what the people are doing. Because I've been giving lessons 
online lessons since 2012. And it's like, okay, you know, since pandemic time, it's like so many people get into the online things. Um, and it was really nice for me because we already had the system created since like 2014, no? Um, but what happened? It's like, how? It's like for, for me as a teacher, it's like, okay, I can record like 50 tutorials. I can sell that for 67 bucks, 40 bucks, 1000 bucks, depends on. And it's done. But man, if I truth with myself, it's like, how I can share with you that you can learn flamenco online. And myself, I used to say flamenco and learn flamenco from gypsies at the flamenco parties in the south of Spain. It's like, if I'm truth, I can I cannot share to you. I want to teach you flamenco online, but I never le learn flamenco online. I learn flamenco from gypsies, from the parties, from shows, from rehearsals. It's like on the last two years, I was thinking, you know, hey man, how can I be truth with myself and also truth with my students? Because I don't want only to um, record tutorials and sell them on the internet. So since we changed the name of the academy and we put the name of Familia Flamenca, what I'm doing is like I'm traveling twice a year to the United States and we are doing like recitals with my students. So last time was in April, it was in New York City and I ran like a theater for 100 people and we make a recital with my students. Each of them, they play a, a solo piece. And they were like policemen, like retired people, teachers, like they, didn't, they weren't professionals, they were just um, aficionados, as we say, people that like to play guitar. And next one will be in November, it's going to be in Orlando. I don't know, I think that you are more or less far because, no, you are, you're close, Mario, you're in Texas, more or less. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on November 11th or November 18th, you have to see, because, you know, I, I know that you have um, the... Thanksgiving close around this date, so I will see. But the idea why I call that Familia Flamenca, because as I told you, the first thing that you're going to find once you get inside is a community. And it's the most difficult thing to find on the internet. It's really easy to find tutorials. It's really easy to find books, but it's really difficult to find a group of people that are looking forward to help yourself whenever you need that. And a group of people that will be able to answer to any question that you have 24 hours a day because I have teachers in Spain and other teachers in the US okay that will be taking care about your progress okay so that's the first thing our community our WhatsApp group our Facebook group that is always taking care about your improvements and on your on the path and each I'm working also always on period of six months okay and the idea is to after six months you will get like three solo pieces ready to play like not really difficult i'm truth with you okay something really like the basic flamenco roots and depends on the level you will have have access to different solo pieces okay once you get inside you have like a one-on-one -on -one meeting with myself and i decide in which level you are going to be so depends on the level you will be on the group a or b for our membership area and you will be watching like different solo pieces depends of the level in which you are, okay? So how are you going to learn those pieces? So once you get inside, you're going to be receiving automatically one new lesson, recorded lesson a week. The idea is here to don't, imagine like a flamenco Netflix. Each mm -hmm. week, you're going to have like a new episode of the series, of the, of the film, mm -hmm. okay? So um, after six months, you will have like 24 lessons, okay? And during these 24 lessons, you are going to be able to get and learn these three solo pieces. They are recorded, okay? How I, as a teacher, see your improvements? We are going to have our QA lessons. Sometimes it's weekly because if I am here at home and or Wednesdays, sometimes I do live streaming with my students live. Um, it's like I'm ready to ask and to answer any lesson, anything, any question that you have. Also, sometimes on the WhatsApp group, it's able you are able to ask whatever you need. 
Okay, but sometimes in, with the camera, it's so much better to ask and to solve any situation. Okay, so the WhatsApp group, the wall lesson, uh, recorded lesson a week, and the two QA lessons a month live, but sometimes most of the, the times are four on the month, but officially two QA lessons a month. Okay, and that's it, guys. So you will have scores, tabs of anything that you need by myself, by the guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions, guys, about that. I don't know how you find that. If you have any question about the program, about the about anything. Okay. Is there Mario? Is there uh, for for the since I'm a completely newbie, a new person uh, it, to start a structured uh, you know approach for to flamenco? Yeah. Uh, where would I for for my type of, of need? Where would I begin? Is there like a basic um, yeah. you are going uh, to, entry? We, uh, and we create uh, for beginners, really, really beginners, and we create like a solea section, like a really old school staff mm -hmm. repertoire. We arrange by some of the teachers, Saka myself, we arrange like a special um, solea, solo piece, okay, in which you're going to relegate the most basic techniques and also you get used to the 12 bit measure, okay? Okay. okay. Where uh, would I get that information, Mario? I, mean, I will. I will say. Let me share. Let me share with right you. Right there. Let me share. Do you want? If you have some time, mm -hmm. I'm going to share with you right now the the website, and I mm, we can see anything that you need. I will send you the link. Okay, guys. Here you have like some the history. Okay. What what did you get? Something about myself. Yeah, history, history, history. What you get? Yeah. Also, you have all the techniques. As soon as you get inside, also you have all my techniques exercises ready for you, in which is not just a tutorial. You also have myself recorded for 20 minutes each exercise to practice with me while I increase the tempo automatically. It's not just with a metronome. It's myself practicing for 20 minutes all my exercises from 60 beats until around 100 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. Because it's, mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to I don't want to share with you my exercises. I want you to get and learn my habit. Because once that you know how we study my techniques, you will be able to use that with any exercise that you can find on the internet. You know what I mean? Okay. Right. Judge. So let me keep sharing this way. Okay, here you make a like comparison because you are getting yeah, if we make numbers, it's like after six months of group of, group of lessons, recorded lessons, if we make a summary of all the lessons, it costs more around 3000 back for sure. You aren't going to pay that today. Okay. Uh, yeah, also you have like a few workshops that they have about Palmas, about Metronom. Okay. And the price for mm -hmm. the academy, the official price is 67 a month. Okay. But for the people today on the live streaming, also for you guys, and, and you will see that, that I will be sending the recording. And you will see that this, this section is going to be cut. Okay. For all my subscribers, okay, the official price just for subscribers will be 47 a month or one payment of 182. Okay, for the six months. Okay, or you can stay 47 a month and you can cancel your subscription, your subscription whenever you want. Okay, and also this 47, have 50 days for free. I forgot that. You can join today and you won't be charged today until the next 15 days. If you want to cancel before, that's it. Okay. You have the link on the, on the, on the, on the chat if you want to copy that. Guys, any question, please let me know. I'm open round to answer to you and help you with anything you need. Well, Mario, I just wanted to get kind of a general idea. Uh, like I said, I've never been exposed to a structured, uh, you know, approach to learning, uh, you know, play the guitar. Uh, and this is the first time. So I wanted to have a general idea uh, what uh, what it is 
and you know how to go about it. Uh, so uh, I think I have a general idea now. Uh, and now it's kind of um, you know do a little planning and 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 start you know something like this. So uh, but the planning, again, the planning, I don't want to have a. The planning is done for you. So mm -hmm. because we already have six months Correct. of tutorials ready re waiting for you. Sure. So like because sure. imagine that you join, imagine right. that you don't. If you join today, today is Monday. So each Monday at right now is eleven p.m. here. So each Monday at eleven p.m. Mm -hmm. you will see open mm -hmm. uh, a section of the uh, a new section on the on the members area. You know, maybe I can share with you. If you wait okay. one second. I can share with you how it looks inside. Okay. Yeah, you have like here like really different models. Model one, like a welcome welcome section with a welcome message, like something, some homework that you have to be do before you start with the exercises. Okay. Here you have a so section for beginners? Yeah, no, that's a full that's a full if you see really beginners, beginners. So Lea beginners, for example, this one is a this one is because I get inside as a student. Okay, and mm -hmm. the members are right now, and it's the beginners thing. Okay, if I change the be uh, once ago, if I change the group, okay, medium and advanced, I will have different exercises. Okay, and different repertoire and different everything. Okay, so for example, here you have techniques really beginners and technique for beginners. And for example, here you have like five no five no you have eleven lessons, so it's like almost three months in which you will get each week a new falsetta, a new section of the solo piece uh, of Solia, you will study on the first part. Then you have tangos, okay? On tangos, for example, this is student, this profile of a student, you know, and, and the teacher, so has like three open falsettas and also compass variation. It's like, those are the, uh, the lessons, okay? That will be, for example, if you join today, you will see just this one because it's the first. Next week, you will be, you will see this one open, and each week you will have a new one open. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Uh, so it's like as I told you, guys, is like I have all the online courses that you know. I have them. I bought them to know what is all the people doing. Um, I'm doing what. All, I'm doing what all of them are doing, adding myself. It's like I am ready for you 24 hours a day. Also, you know, Jason, that by the way, saw myself sometimes before for free always. It's like also know how it is to contact with myself and how it is to ask me whatever you need. And it's like how I can be truth with you. It's not just to send you a tutorial. I have here like 50 tutorials ready for sale. But I want to sell myself, not sell just a video. And you can find a video on YouTube. So I want to be really the person with the rest of the teachers that are into the academy to really help yourself to work on the way that you have to work. Forget the books, forget the scores, and forget a lot of things that you, in which you only get stuck. Because if you buy a book, it's awesome. I have a lot of books. But the I have not a person that helps myself on how to study those books, I will get stuck in one month, two weeks, or two months. It's like whenever you get stuck, you will have a person that will tell you, will tell you what do you have to do. How can you get out of this stuck um, situation? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. That's it. Was a pleasure to see all of you today. Um, please, if you have any. Any questions or something that you want to ask, it would be nice to see you to answer an email or whatever you need by myself. Okay. Well, Mario, it was a pleasure. Uh, My pleasure, like I, said, I will, uh, you know, uh, follow up with the with the website and and kind of do a little bit of planning. So great, it will be awesome. Learning to, experience. It will be awesome, man. If you can join yourself. Sure. Bye bye. Okay. Mario, nice to meet well, you. Mario, you, Mario, nice to meet you guys, and also Jason, you. nice to see you. Man. Bye bye. Take care, guys. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye.